In this video, we're going to look at uh, one of the mysterious elements in Adobe Illustrator, which is the image trace function. A lot of people have no idea what it's for. It doesn't literally trace in probably the way that you would think of it, uh, but it is a method of conversion. You're able to take something that's, say, a raster image like this one I've got here, where you zoom in and the closer you get the more you realize that this is made up of tiny pixels and it has a limited resolution a method of converting it to a vector and we're gonna look at all the things that happen when you do that and the different upsides downsides and you know probably what you would be using it for more often than not I find that I use it most to create silhouettes of elements uh, rather than realistic photographs, but it is capable of doing semi-realistic photographs. You'll see some of what that looks like in a minute. So when I select this, uh, Illustrator knows that it's not a vector element. It knows that it's a JPEG uh, that's been brought in here. It has a white background, which is useful to me for reasons that you'll see here in a little bit. But it has this X over it, and then also you get all these options up at the top that allow you to make changes to it because it's not a vector. It doesn't really belong here. If I go up to the image trace drop down here, you'll see that there's a series of presets, and this is what we're focused on is just how this works. If I select something like high fidelity photo, it's going to think about it for a minute. It's going to go in and analyze the image and then convert it over to a vector, which involves breaking it down into tiny little flat structures of color, almost like t little blobs of paint. It doesn't create something that looks exactly like pixels, which are uh, structured and anti-aliased and all that. Instead you get something that has a painterly look to it. If I move in here you can see it looks quite a bit like a painting. And as you move in closer and closer you can see that each of these is made up of small little areas of flat shape that are organic looking. So it can give a photo a pretty interesting illustrated look and depending on the type of preset that you use I can change it here. Let's say I choose something like six colors. This limits the number of colors that it utilizes and you get something that has an even more broken down and stylized look to it. Uh, this has become something of an abused style. I was actually in Spain fairly recently and saw a menu cover that was a picture of a building that had just been image traced. So it's it gets abused a little bit and it's pretty easy to spot when you know what it looks like. Image tracing by itself does not make good design. Instead, it's something that should be used in tandem with other elements and other customizations by the artist. So I broke this down to six colors and you can see that everything's now more limited. They didn't use pink or yellow uh, like it did in the previous one because it has to choose the most dominant colors and then just automatically fill those in. So these are the same colors as this highlight on the side over on the left. Now one that I find myself using a lot is black and white logo because this is what breaks it down to a silhouette. So I use this a lot for a variety of different uh, designs simply because it's a efficient way to take even something handwritten or hand drawn and convert it to a vector and then work more on it because it's been broken down to such a basic level. Now we're going to look at this with a little bit more detail. Up here next to the presets there's a panel and if I click that panel, it gives me more options to tweak on any one of these, but we're just going to focus on black and white logo right now. The most important one right out of the gate is threshold. How much is being turned black? How much is being turned white? Since it's taking every element of the photograph and choosing which category it goes into, black or white. If we change that threshold, we change the boundary by which it chooses. So if I keep increasing this, eventually even that white paper will disappear. See how many steps I have to get it to before it does that. I'm not sure. Okay, it's almost gone. We're nearly up to the top. So basically the only thing that's not changed at this point is the white background. If I take it any further, whole thing's black. But if I drop it back down to 249, it blacks out the silhouette of the table but not the background. So this is a good place to be. There's another really useful element down here, it's ignore white. If I click that, it's going to drop out the white of the background and then you'll be to see through it to the back. That's why a photograph with a white background is useful is because you can use that ignore white option. Now this is not actually done to where I can edit it, erase it, change the color, etc. Uh, I can close out the image trace panel right now, 
but before it's finally finished, you have to go up here to the top where it says expand, which if you hover over it says convert tracing object into paths. So it's not even a vector yet. It's showing me what the vector would look like, but it's not actually a vector yet. If I hit expand, the X disappears and it becomes an object, finally. And then I can go in here and I can change its color. I can take an eraser and I can remove part of it. It can now be treated like a vector because that's what it is. It's gone through the conversion process and as long as you hit expand that process is complete. Now there's a lot more you can do with image trace but at a really basic level this is how it works and you have to be aware that there's presets that you can then adjust manually and then also that you finish the process by hitting expand.